it's me again, that time of the month. I want to read you a scripture. Jeremy Pearson's taught us a lesson at our conference the other year that I've been thinking about again, and I just want to stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. Luke chapter 12, and I'm reading from the 15th verse, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. You think about that. You think about that. A man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things that he possesses. The title that the publishers have put in on this chapter is called The Rich Fool. Now, when you think about that, most foolish people that I've met aren't rich. <laughs> Their foolishness has led them to poverty more so than riches. But here was a man that, act for, by all apparent observations, he had some money. He had to have some intelligence. He had to have some business skills. He had to have some financial success. He had reached the place that he's referred to as rich, referred to as rich. But the admonition of Jesus, take heed to yourself. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And then he tells the story of the ground of a certain man who brought forth bountifully. And then the man thought within himself, saying, What shall I do because I have no room wherewith to bestow my brother? Excess. If you remember our lesson, excess. He's saying, I have more than I can consume on myself. Now what do I do with the excess? He went looking for a bank. In our definition, he went looking for an investment portfolio. He went in looking for opportunity, property, something to invest in. And he decided bigger barns would suit him. And so, but when you look at it, the question is, what is he going to do with the excess? What's he going to do with the excess? And it's what he did with the excess that got him labeled a fool. Because that night he died. And the question was asked of him. God said to him, think about it. Think about it. He, he, he's going, he dies this night. And God asked him the question. He asked him the question, Who shall these things be which thou hast provided? Who's thing, who is going to own the things that you've provided? Where is it going to go? And that is what made the man a foolish man. What he did with the excess that God had provided him with. Dusk and I have come to understand this. Every dollar has got an assignment. Some of it God has assigned to me to feed my family. Some he's assigned to me to buy my car. Some he's assigned to me to look after my children. He's assigned money to me for various things. Then there's money he's assigned to me strictly for the kingdom. And God wants me to understand that I must seek the assignment of the money that he's placed within my control. See, what God does, he doesn't just automatically pour stuff on us. What he does, he allows us to hear his word. He allows us to receive his love. And then he allows us to respond in faith. He gives us the gift of faith so that when we receive the word, and hear, about his, hear the word and receive his love for us, we respond in faith to what we have heard and what we have received. And so when we begin to understand that all money, all money has an assignment attached to it, and then we begin to realize that it's my responsibility to get this to its proper place or else I'll be misappropriating the money that God has given me. Now, I want to tell you something. A man's life does not consist. He's not identified by his possession. He is, uh, his, he, is, he is identified by his riches toward God. He lays up treasure for himself. He's not rich toward God. But when you are rich toward God, God's assignment to you is treasure for yourself, but also directing and getting the money that he's assigned to where it needs to go. I'm asking you, are you praying and asking God to give you the direction for the assignment of all that he's placed within your trust? I ask you to consider 
and prayerfully considered what I've just shared with you.